Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we're making the Eye of Cthulhu, which is one of the more ambitious November projects I've worked on. Uh, let me show you what this looks like in the 3D viewport. Uh, you can see it's basically a cube with a bunch of, you know, volumetrics going on. That's how I did the clouds and this monstrosity of a geometry nodes project. In fact, look at all these nodes. Uh, so. That being said, I want to show you how to make the Eye of Cthulhu. I want you to treat this more like a, uh, not, not like a podcast or a live stream, but just a very calm tutorial, because there's going to be a lot going on. I expect this to take, you know, longer than the other ones. But we got to do a lot in terms of geometry nodes, a lot in terms of materials. So uh, buckle in, you're probably going to learn a lot of tricks during this one. So if you think about what the Eye of Cthulhu is, and I'm just going to set up geometry nodes as I do this, um, Eye of Cthulhu is basically this kind of distorted sphere with veins going along it, kind of like capillaries, a pupil, and then uh, tendrils that make it fly. Uh, we need to make all of these components, but we're going to take it piece by piece by piece, geometry first, materials later. So starting off with the eye, it's basically a big sphere, so I'm going to take a sphere and make it large, and I want this thing to kind of look blobular and distorted over time. So I'm going to set position, and I'm going to distort this with some noise. So, again, because this tutorial is so allegedly going to be so long, I'm not going to explain like everything I do. I'm just going to talk about the methodology, right? So, for example, when I have a noise texture, yes, I need to subtract by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I've explained it a million times, but if we explain every little step, we're going to get lost in the weeds. So I have a noise texture. I'm centering it, and I'm uh, scaling it. I want this to be a low resolution kind of noise, something like this, and I want it to be animated over time. So I'm going to use a four dimensional noise, uh, W relative to the time that I'm going to make twice as slow. So if we look at this now, uh, we have more of an interesting thing going on. Uh, let me make this a little less intense and, oh, I wanted to divide by two and a little slower. This is something I want to be smooth. And uh, there we go, we have the crux of the eye. Next, I wanna add veins, and I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna call this available on Patreon, because it is, it's gonna be available on Patreon. Link in the description if you wanna support these tutorials. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to create these veins that go up it, kinda like the capillaries in your eye, you know, those red veins and all that. And uh, this is exactly what the shortest path node's for. So we're gonna start here, select a bunch of random points, and uh, create uh, things for that. So uh, shortest path node, if you haven't used it, uh, we need the shortest edge path, and then we, in this case, want to convert it into curves. So I'm going to do edge paths to curves. You basically connect the index to the index. You connect the uh, mesh. So I'm going to move this over here. Uh, you connect the uh, mesh to here. And then all you need to do is set a start and end vertex. So for my end vertex, I think I want where the index is equal to. So I'm checking where the index is equal to zero, because I think that should be this bottom point. And then for the start point or where the curves are going to go to, um, I'm going to use a random value. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, <laughs> as expected, it's going to find the shortest path to points, uh, which is going to look like these uh, arcs. Uh, to make it more randomized, which is clearly what we want, take the edge cost and uh, randomize that as well. And now we get something that looks a bit more interesting. Um, okay, so we have these curves. I'm going to kind of make them curvier. I'm going to fillet uh, the curve and limit the radius. If you increase the count, it creates these kind of nice... Uh, curvy looking things. Um, I think I'm happy with that. And also, I guess all of this is upside down. It looks like it's uh, starting up here and finding this. Uh, we'll, we'll take care of that in a second. But I guess I also want to trim the curve and make it less, uh, less long. So these are the veins coming from the top. Uh, I want you to imagine that we give them thickness, for example. Curve to mesh <coughs> with a circle, or I guess with a curved circle. 
we take this and we join it. And uh, the good thing is, so right now this is looking dreadful. So I'm going to make this tinier, lower the resolution, make it even tinier. So right now we have this uh, distorted eye, and I want you to imagine, or to see, uh, that we have these like capillaries or veins coming off of it uh, that, you know, kind of do the deal. Uh, maybe what we could do is we could randomize the uh, trim, and we can also, so this probability is going to say how many veins are we going to have, and the seed is going to give us different distributions in a sense. Um, yeah, I think uh, something to do here is we want to resample the curve. This is just going to smooth it out a little. It's going to make it look uh, less intense and all that. So here's uh, before. It's looking quite angular and after. And I think I'm happy with that. I think uh, one thing we need to do is we need to mess with uh, a couple of these parameters. So I don't want there to be this many. There's a lot of overlap here. So we don't need this many veins. Something like that. Play with the seed. Whoops. Until you get something that looks good. And I think that's uh, adding quite a bit uh, to our mesh. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to rotate it so that it's facing, uh, you know, to the side. Uh, we could do that on the x-axis, or let's see, what do we want? I want this to be facing this way. So we want to rotate on the y-axis, it seems, by negative 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, let's make our veins look better. Uh, this is just going to be a matter of radius. So I'm going to set radius. I want this to uh, kind of taper off in a sense. So I'm going to use the uh, spline parameter. So as we go along the curve, change the uh, radius. Um, and to get a custom control of this that we can kind of mess with in a very visual way, I'm going to use RGB curves set the radius and what it's doing now is as the factor increases our radius increases so it's going to look like they are very thick in the beginning and then they taper off unless we do something uh, to this but this looks much better than before i think you'll agree I think another thing we can do is we could have these like pulsate and they could be bigger. And I think there's a couple of things we can do. So I'm going to multiply this by two. So now they're nice thick veins. <laughs> yeah, not the first time you've heard that expression. Yeah, uh, they're nice thick veins. And you could do some uh, interesting stuff as well here uh, with like, you know, uh, shaping our radius. Um, but I think I want this uh, to pulsate. So what I'm going to do is for the factor, I can add over time, and we want this to be repetitious because it's going from zero to one. So I'm gonna make this a fraction. I'm gonna add a, I guess we could do an RGB curves again and reset it. And I'm going to add what I'm about to do. Uh, let's reset view, or how to reset curve. That's what I want. So you can see this is giving it a pulsating. It looks horrible, uh, but you can see we're taking the factor, and as we go along the factor, we're adding over time, and that, which is what makes it go along this, and then we're having it repeat with the fraction. Um, we want this to be nice and smooth, so I think we just want to raise the middle. Yeah, and now we're getting this nice pulsation, and we could get we could get fancy with it. Look at that. And we can also uh, offset it so they're not all pulsing at the same time by adding a random value. Interpolated per spline. So now they're not all going at the same uh, time. And you could also randomize the speed and all this. Uh, but I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's see. So we're adding this over time. And I think what, one thing I don't like is that you can kind of see the uh, tips here, but I think that's such a minor detail that it doesn't matter. 
Okay, I think we're almost done with these. Again, this is something you can uh, grow over the sphere and choose how much you want it uh, to take over. I think the next thing is to add these uh, tendrils and the things in the back. Uh, so what I want to do, <coughs> instead of just like adding these tendrils, is I want them to kind of be uh, seamless, like uh, joined together. So I'm gonna add some kind of meat or blobular looking stuff in the back. Uh, to do this, so we're getting a bit complicated here. So we have uh, our curve, and we have the original with the shet, shet, <laughs> set shade smooth. Uh, what I want to do is I want to use our sphere uh, to isolate part of the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the bottom by separating components. Nope. By separating geometry. And I want to look at where the position is uh, the Z component of it. If I want to isolate the bottom hemisphere, I want to look at where the Z component is less than some amount. So take Z and ask where it's less than some amount, and let's see what this looks like. So we have our distorted sphere, and I want to ask what area is less than this. One thing you're going to notice is, yes, we're isolating the back, which when you, you know, when we turn it, um, it will be like this section over here. Uh, yes, we're isolating the back, but you can see it's kind of like updating over time. This is because our eye is distorting. So as it distorts, what is and is not greater than some Z values changing. Uh, to fix this, we want this position to be relative to the morphing thing. Uh, so to do that, I think one simple way is we can capture the position. Let me do this as a vector. We can capture the position uh, before we add our distortion and connect this here. And now this will keep this uh, constant. And what I want to do with this is, let's see, if we distribute points, I want to see if they do or don't have an updating issue. They do a little. Okay. So I think one thing we can do is we can just like use the points as a uh, distribution. So what I mean by this is we are going to use, I guess we can use mesh to points. Right, so now we have a series of points, and then we want points to volume. That's going to give us a volume, and then a lot of conversion here, volume to mesh. And we need to fix a couple of things here. First of all, I want to increase the voxel amount. Second of all, the radius is too big. Too big here, so that's something I want to randomize. So it can go between 0 and 0.5. So now we're getting this nice blobular thing. I also want only some of the points to be here, not all of them. So I could do a randomization there. And now we're getting something that looks a bit more interesting. Um, so I'm thinking let's take this and add it to the chunk. Oh, I guess we did it on the wrong side. Uh, so instead of less than, make it greater than. And we can shift this over. And you can see how this, uh, once we get this to look good, it's going to be this nice transitional piece uh, between. So I'm thinking, how do we make this look better? We need to increase the voxel amount. Um, I also want this to be a bit bigger on average. Something like that. Mess with the probability. Want some of them to be way smaller. And this kind of gives it a nice meaty chunk in the background that kind of blends it together. Uh, to make it, first of all, I want more points. So I think we can just subdivide the mesh since it's using that. Okay, that looks much better. Um, to smooth this out, if you wanted to, you can do a merge by distance. So it's going to take this uh, volume to mesh conversion and then kind of smooth it out in a sense. Although, you know, it does get kind of glitchy. But let's see, we set shade smooth, that should make it look a bit better, it does. Take this, divide it by 2, and now we're getting something that looks a bit uh, better, I think. This is something that we can also evolve over time, I didn't do this myself, uh, but you do something like, uh, you take the uh, radius, and we're going to add time, so we want this to evolve over time, and oh boy, <laughs> 
that was a mistake. <laughs> we want to send this through a sign function so that it's repetitious and stays between negative 1 and 1. I'm going to map range. I know I'm doing a lot here. Again, I said I wouldn't explain like everything, everything. So negative 1 to 1 turns into 0 to like 0.2 so that it can only grow by a maximum of 0.2. And now you can see this thing's pulsating. And I want to offset this by a random amount so that they're not all in sync. And now you can see these are pulsating at different amounts. Um, I want, what do I want? I want it to be smaller or bigger. So let's do negative 0.1 to 0.1. And let's see, here's before and after. I guess it's still a bit too big. Divide by 2. Yeah, now it's looking nice and uh, blobular and all this. Again, uh, this is all, I mean, I don't need to tell you that it's all procedural. Uh, but it is, it's all procedural. And you can have it like overcome the eye or just be really only in the back. It is 100% up to you. Um, but I think that looks pretty good. There's a lot going on here. And I think uh, once we add these tendrils, uh, which aren't too complicated, uh, we're going to be ready for materials. Now, if you think about it, the tendrils should come out of the same area where the blob is, uh, which is this top selection. Uh, so we're actually almost uh, ready uh, to do that. I want to uh, instance on points right here, and I know we're getting a confusing looking mess, but you know, that's the deal. I, I saved since I didn't save for a while. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to instance on points a curve. These are going to be our tendrils. Again, we want this to be random so that it's not all of these, but there's just a few tendrils. And basically, as you're seeing, this tutorial is just basically adding as many random values as possible. Uh, I want to randomize the scale. So some tendrils are long and some of them are short. Something like that. Or one trick I learned recently is if you do a 0 to 1, you send this through an RGB curves to shape this. So you're going to have some short tendrils and some long ones. Or you could have the opposite. something like that and then I'm gonna make these tendrils on average a bit longer so I'm just gonna multiply this by two okay uh, we take this we join it to the clusterfuck and now we have our nice <laughs> uh, tendrils uh, one thing I want to do is I want this curve line to be made of a bunch of points especially since we are going to distort them I'm going to I guess we don't need to realize <clears throat> we don't need to realize instances I just want to uh, distort this over time. So I'm going to, or maybe we do need to realize instances. Yes, we do. So I want to, uh, <coughs> I want to distort this over time. Again, every time we use a noise texture, you need to uh, recenter it. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to do a scaling. So something like this. And then a neat trick is right now it's using the position for this. Uh, we could actually have it use the uh, index for our distortion. Uh, the nice thing about that is as you add it, it kind of like drifts along the thing in a sense. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say we can add the time and it's gonna, especially if we make it look a bit slower, since we want this to kind of be slowly going through, Basically, there's going to be waves that propagate along our uh, tendrils that I think looks really good. Uh, let's add more geometry to this. And clearly, we need to bring down the scale so it's nice and smooth. And when, whenever you use index, by the way, as a... Uh, oh, wait. I want the index to be the vector. And I want the time to be here. That was a mistake. There we go. Anytime you use the index, you got to bring the scale very low. That's just a fact. Um, and in fact, these are moving so slow that I want to uh, multiply the time. But uh, what I was saying is the wave propagates along these tendrils um, in a sense. At least it should. Do, do I want to add here? Sorry about the confusion. Yeah, there we go. Now it's moving along the tendrils, you can see. Um, so, 
And we can also animate this W over time. I don't think I want to actually. So I think something like this looks pretty good. I'm going to increase the scale. So now we have that. And I also, to make this not look so like, you know, hair coming off of it, but more like tendrils, uh, I'm going to add in some rotation off of the normal. So as we go from like minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 to 0.5, we get something that kind of looks like it's exploding a bit more outwards and uh, more so before we, uh, before we, let's see, rotate instances. Uh, before we realize these instances, we could animate the rotation. So let's see, uh, pivot point. So we can we have this up and down, we have this expansion. Um, what do I want to do? Maybe I want to control it from the random value. So I want to. Um, I want to scale this over time. So I'm going to do a vector math. I'm going to scale when this is set to zero. They're going to be perfectly straight. Otherwise, like this. And then I think we just take time send it through a sine function so same idea we send it through a sine function send that through a map range so it doesn't go from negative one to one but instead from zero to one and let's see what this looks like i connect this here and now these tendrils are moving and they're also expanding to make this look a little less intense we can have it go from 0.5 to one so it just kind of barely uh, does that um, I, I want to randomize the length a bit more. I like the look of that. And what else do I want to do? We could do a smoother step for this animation. It's not very noticeable, but I think it, it looks good. And I think finally, uh, now that we have all our curves, uh, all we need to do is uh, give them thickness just like before. We could actually probably copy some of these nodes from before. We'll see. So I'm going to set curve radius. Again, using the circle, so this gives it some thickness. I want to set this radius, um, and let's see what happens if we connect the same function from before. So we the pulsating function. Hmm. I think one thing is they're kind of facing the wrong way. Let's see what happens if we reverse the curve. I do like this idea because it requires like a lot less work. <laughs> Um, I think that looks pretty good, and all I want to do now is multiply this by a bit of randomization. So random value, and this time maybe I want it per vertex. Let's see, or per point. Yeah, that looks a lot cooler, I think. Okay. So in terms of geometry, there's a lot more we can do to this. We can actually add curvature to the pupil and all this. Uh, but I think at this point, it's probably wise to get to the point where we're making uh, some materials. So let's uh, get to that. So uh, for the materials, basically all we want is slippery, gooey, gory. Uh, that, that's what we're going for. So I'm loading up cycles. I'm uh, using an HDRI environment for the lighting. So we can actually get reflections on all the gory elements. And uh, I don't think it's going to be as difficult as you think, or as you may think, uh, these materials. So really all we have <coughs> is we have a bunch of components uh, that we're eventually joining and then rotating together. Each one of these is going to get its own material, or we might reuse it for some of these. So I'm going to go to the shader editor. Uh, let's start with the eyeball. Um, so for the eyeball, I can set material, find out which one the eye is. So let's see. It's the one where we just distorted it, this. Okay, so this gets the eye material. So now when we mess with the eye, it should only affect the main sphere. Yep. So the eye should kind of be this uh, yellowish, very reflective... Uh, thing you could try adding transmission and all this so it's like see-through transparent glass um, I don't think that's really the look so I'm just gonna play with this just a little until I get something that I like 
Okay, there we have the uh, I. We're going to add more detail to it for sure. Um, next, let's do the uh, tendrils, these like meaty tendrils. And to do that, I'm going to copy the material. I'm going to set this to a new one. And then this one can be called tendrils or veins. So now when we control this, um, I guess it's affecting both of these for some reason. Hmm. Well, I guess I do want them to be the same material anyways. So what I want to do is I'm going to use a noise texture. And by the way, this is something where you want to create a custom coordinate system uh, for each component. But again, that's probably you know too much work for a tutorial at this point. So I'm just going to add a bit of a uh, high detail noise. Something like that. Add a bit of roughness just to have a gory element. Uh, this is going to control a bunch of stuff. First of all, mm, yeah, first of all, I'm going to have this be kind of like a darkish red color for this nice gory color. And the trick to make this look like gore is in the bump mapping. So we're going to use this as a normal map. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that adds a good amount of detail. I want to bring down the roughness so it's nice and slippery. And I want to make this transmissive. And all of these things together is what makes this look kind of gory and stuff like this. And you want to play with the color so it doesn't look like chocolate necessarily. There we go. Something like that. Um, I'm thinking also for the eye, now we can go back, uh, we could have this do some stuff relative to ambient occlusion. So where the tendrils are touching. So as we go here, I'm looking at this ambient occlusion and I want this to be darker in those areas. And maybe uh, we could also have it where it's black, it's kind of reddish. So you can see it's kind of staining the eyeball in the in a sense. And that makes it look a bit better, I think. Something like that, even darker. Okay. Uh, next thing we want is the uh, blobular component, and that's the volumetric. So we just need to see where the volume is. I think it's right here. I'm going to copy the tendril material since it's pretty close to what I want. So this is going to inherit the blob. So now you can see our blob's getting stuff. Um, I just want to randomize the color a little. So I'm going to use this here. Uh, copy the color here, here, connect it, and I want to add a bit of variation. So there could be some yellow uh, components and stuff like this too. So you can see that there's uh, two shades of colors going on here. And uh, do I want this to be more transmissive? I feel like the, the more transmissive I make it, the more gory uh, it tends to look. And I'm also going to do that with the tendrils. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, you could also add clear coat in all this. Um, next, I'm thinking the eyes looking a bit you know, not gory <laughs> as compared to the rest of this. Uh, one thing we could do is we captured the position before. Uh, instead of just capturing it, we can store this uh, since we want the coordinate system anyway, since we are making the pupil. So I'm going to store this attribute as a vector. So again, this is just the position coordinates for the, <coughs> for the I. So I'm going to call this I coordinates. And now we could uh, bring this in here as i coordinates let's see what that looks like yep this is our position system i want to do some stuff to this so first of all i'm going to separate the z component and distort this with some noise so quick trick on how to do this just take a noise texture mix rgb relative to a linear light operation and that's going to break up your gradient a little and make it look a bit more interesting so I'm going to add detail, I'm going to add roughness, and uh, what I want uh, for this, uh, for the eye, I guess I didn't unlink these ever. Uh, let's see. Oh wait, now I want to uh, mess with the actual eye. What happened here? 
the blobular is super bright now. Why is it so bright? I am confused. Oh, it's because the eye is emitting so much light. Okay, so with the eye, there we go. Now we're viewing this. Uh, we have our gradient. And what I want to do with this is I want to uh, mix the color. So we, again, we have the same being inclusion thing going on. I'm going to mix the color red. And let's see. So here is before and after. Clearly, I need to make this darker. And I want to shift over the gradient. So now we can build uh, on where uh, this is going to happen. Um, in fact, mm, no, I think that looks pretty good. So we, we take something like this. I'm going to darken it even more. And I think for the main color, it's definitely a bit too bright. So I want to darken it, make it a bit yellow, and now it's looking a bit more like cursed or possessed or one of these things. Uh, to make the pupil, uh, it's nothing too complicated, at least what I'm thinking. Uh, we take our coordinate system, and we want to basically ask where um, is this point and kind of create a circle around it. So I think an easy way to do that is we take some uh, vector math, And we calculate the distance from, I believe it's the top. No, it's the bottom. There we go. So I'm calculating the distance from the negative uh, pole of this. And then uh, we could do some uh, very simple stuff. So, for example, I could do a greater than operation. And then if I now have two principled BSDFs that I mix together, and this is what we're viewing, I use this as the uh, factor. Um, and I want to switch these. So, for example, if I make this smaller, uh, the pupil, this isn't exactly what we're going to do, but you can make it this very, like, dark um, thing that has its own material and transmission and all of this. Um, what do I want to do for this? I want to use the distance as a gradient for the color. So I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to send this through a color ramp and add kind of layers to the eye. So imagine we have kind of like a, uh, a green component and then maybe a uh, blue component. And maybe I should set these to, or at least space them closer together. So now you can see we're getting uh, layers to this. And then on the inside, it should be black. Of course, these aren't probably the colors you want, so maybe red and kind of like a yellowish is a better color scheme. Uh, but this is how I would uh, roughly make the pupil. Um, again, this is something that needs more detail. Uh, so I'm going to take a uh, noise texture connected to our coordinate system. And I'm going to bump this up and then use this as a normal mapping for our principled BSDF. And now we have some uh, detail in the eye. Uh, to get this looking better, increase the detail, add a bit of distortion. This is just kind of create kind of the cornea look. And I want this to be everywhere except for here. So one thing we can do is we can take the distance, send it through another greater than, and then multiply this effect here. Or you get to have it be the strength is another idea. So let's see, I'm bringing this down. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty okay. And we can mess with the size of the eye and all this. I think one thing that would uh, be interesting is we could uh, animate this in a sense. So let's see, we can add. And adding is basically opening and closing the eye uh, in a sense. Uh, we could do this uh, over time. So we take a noise texture, make it one-dimensional, and then do a hash frame over, or maybe just a hash frame. Um, let's see. That's definitely a bit too much. So I'm just scaling it. 
and then I'm going to multiply. Wow, that is actually an interesting look. I like that. Multiplied by 10. Let's see. It really is not doing much, is it? Let's see why. So we want to add. What is going on here? Oh, no, we're multiplying. Sorry about the confusion. Uh, I want to add over time numbers between 0 and like negative 0.2, it seems. So maybe we do a map range here of the noise texture. And we go from like 0 to 1 to 0 to like negative 0.2, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. And we have this go slower. There we go. And now we're getting a contraction of the pupil and all this. Um, again, the way you get this to look good is by like uh, hammering out the details. So for example, this like red should be like a much darker, deeper red. And that already looks much better. It looks much more like a thing. And then this should be kind of maybe a greenish, but darker as well. There we go. Um, tiny edits I want to do to this. I want the tendrils to be longer. Let's see if we can find these. I believe it's uh, the scale of the instance on points, which is lost here. Here we go. So I'm going to increase the uh, spread on those. And uh, I think that's the essence of it. I mean, really what I did is I kind of hammered out the material a bit more and then put it in a cloud scenario. So let's see. Let's see what my original looks like. It's basically the same thing. I uh, just kind of created a moody lighting and all this. Um, I think one thing we could have done uh, to add on to this. Oh, did I not save after a while? Uh, one thing we could have done that I think would have added is on the eye material, I added a normal mapping as well. As you can see right here, it's like catching the light and all this. Either way, I feel like that's like the basics of how to make this Eye of Cthulhu. The rest of it's just kind of, again, hammering out those details. So I'm going to make the uh, blend, this one, the final one, available on Patreon and also Gumroad if you want to try it out. Um, uh, if you want to support this channel and the other one, CG Matter and Default Cube, the best way to do that is via uh, the Patreon. That's all I'm going to say. So thank you to everybody who is there. Uh, I hope you're getting the value you want out of it. Out of it, And uh, I appreciate everybody who watched this. Bye.